Ladies and gentlemen, if you are enjoying my videos, please click the like button. It is the only way the YouTube algorithm really notices me. I would be very grateful to you. Devil's Gate, A Picnic of Terror. Scary story published by Scare Fiction. Read for you by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1. The Perfect Picnic. The scent of freshly brewed coffee and cinnamon pancakes filled the air. A welcome aroma on a crisp Saturday morning. Mark Miller, a creature of habit, sat meticulously folding the weekend newspaper while his wife, Sarah, bustled around the kitchen. Their eight-year-old son, Billy, bounced impatiently at the breakfast table. A backpack overflowing with plastic dinosaurs and a well-worn copy of National Park Adventures clutched in his hand. Mark, a mild-mannered accountant, thrived on routine. Weekdays were a predictable symphony of spreadsheets and budget reports. Weekends, however, were Sarah's domain. An adventurous spirit with an insatiable wanderlust, she craved escapes from the city's monotonous hum. This weekend, their escape landed them at Redwood National Park, a haven of towering trees and meandering trails. Ready for some adventure, champ? Sarah asked, playfully ruffling Billy's hair. Her brown eyes sparkled with excitement, a stark contrast to Mark's usual cautious demeanor. He patted his neatly ironed khakis, a nervous habit whenever confronted with the unknown. Absolutely, Billy chirped, his backpack bouncing with every enthusiastic nod. Are we going to see the biggest trees ever? You bet, Sarah grinned, packing a picnic basket with enough sandwiches and fruit to feed a small army. Redwood National Park has some of the tallest trees in the world. Mark, ever the pragmatist, chimed in. Just remember to stay on the designated trails, Billy. It can be easy to get lost in a park this big. Billy, momentarily distracted by the promise of towering giants, mumbled a half-hearted agreement as Sarah finished preparing. Soon, they were piled into their car, a minivan christened the Adventure Mobile by Sarah and heading towards the park entrance. The drive was filled with Sarah's pointed commentary on historical landmarks and Billy's endless questions about forest creatures. Mark, despite himself, couldn't help but relax as the city faded behind them. The rhythmic swish of the windshield wipers against the light rain outside seemed almost soothing. Upon arriving at the park, the crisp air invigorated them. Towering redwoods, their bark a vibrant rust red, lined the entrance, casting long shadows across the neatly paved path. Sarah, practically vibrating with excitement, nudged Mark. Ready for a hike, city boy? She teased, already striding ahead. Mark, with a sigh that could have been mistaken for contentment, followed. Billy, a miniature explorer, skipped ahead, his eyes wide with wonder as he marveled at the towering trees. As they ventured deeper into the park, the crowds thinned. The paved trails gave way to slightly overgrown, yet clearly marked paths. Mark instinctively steered his family towards the designated areas, his anxiety subtly rising with each step into the unknown. Sarah, however, seemed oblivious to his apprehension. She pointed out interesting rock formations and wildflowers, her voice echoing through the stillness. Billy, fueled by curiosity, kept straying off the path momentarily, chasing colorful butterflies and peering under fallen logs. Just then, Sarah stopped, a mischievous glint in her eyes. Look, she exclaimed, pointing toward a barely visible path branching off from the main one. It was marked by a weathered wooden sign, half obscured by overgrown vines. Hidden Valley Trail, it read, the lettering barely discernible. Mark's stomach clenched. Hidden Valley? Sounds a bit off the beaten path, doesn't it? Sarah's smile widened. That's what makes it an adventure, right Mark? Besides, Billy hasn't seen enough butterflies yet. Billy 
catching wind of the conversation, excitedly bounced on his toes. Hidden Valley. Can we go, Dad? Please. Mark hesitated. His accountant's mind calculated the risks, venturing off the marked trail, limited phone service, and the unsettling feeling creeping up his spine. But seeing the pleading look in Billy's eyes and the unwavering enthusiasm in Sarah's, he found himself uttering the words that would irrevocably alter their weekend getaway. All right, let's see what Hidden Valley has to offer. Chapter Two, A Hidden Path. The Hidden Valley Trail was barely a path at all. Narrow and overgrown, it snaked deeper into the woods, dappled sunlight filtering through the dense canopy overhead. Mark, ever cautious, walked at the front, his eyes scanning the undergrowth for potential hazards. Behind him, Sarah and Billy seemed oblivious to his apprehension, their laughter echoing through the trees. Look, Dad, Billy shouted, pointing excitedly. A flash of vibrant blue caught Mark's eye. It was a butterfly, unlike any he'd ever seen. Its wings were a kaleidoscope of blue and purple, shimmering with an almost iridescent glow. Mesmerized, Billy started to follow it, straying from the narrow trail. Wait, Billy, Mark called out, a note of urgency creeping into his voice. Before he could reach his son, Sarah chuckled. He's just following his guide, Mark. Relax, it's not like he's going anywhere. Mark wasn't so sure. He watched with growing unease as Billy, completely enthralled by the butterfly, ventured deeper into the dense foliage. Sarah, seemingly unconcerned, followed close behind. Left with no choice, Mark trudged after them, the once pristine khakis now sporting a growing collection of grass stains and burrs. The further they ventured, the thicker the forest came. The air grew heavy and still, the cheery chirping of birds replaced by an unsettling silence. The playful sunlight filtering through the leaves dwindled, replaced by an oppressive gloom. Mark shivered, a prickling sensation crawling up his spine. Suddenly, Billy stopped. He stood before a weathered stone archway, half hidden by overgrown vines and twisted branches. The sight sent a jolt of unease through Mark. Carved into the rough-hewn stone were strange symbols, swirling patterns that seemed to writhe in the dim light. An inscription above the arch, barely discernible under a thick layer of moss, read Devil's Gate. Cold wind, seemingly out of nowhere, whistled through the trees, sending shivers down Mark's spine. The hair on his arms stood on end, his initial apprehension morphing into a deep sense of dread. This place felt wrong, terribly wrong. Wow, Billy whispered, his voice filled with an awe that bordered on fear. Sarah, however, seemed intrigued. Devil's Gate, huh? Sounds dramatic, she said, brushing a stray vine aside to get a closer look at the inscription. Mark, his voice tight with concern, spoke up. Let's head back, Sarah. This doesn't feel right. He pointed at the unsettling symbols carved on the archway. Look at those things. It doesn't exactly scream welcome. Sarah, however, didn't seem phased. Relax, Mark, she said, turning to him with a playful smile. Maybe it's just a local legend. Besides, the butterflies seem to lead us here. What are the chances of that? Billy. Captivated by the inscription, chimed in, Can we go through, Mom? Please? Mark looked from his wife to his son, his heart pounding in his chest. Every instinct screamed at him to turn around, to get away from this ominous place. But Sarah's adventurous spirit and Billy's wide, expectant eyes made him hesitate. He sighed, a defeated sound that echoed eerily through the silent woods. All right. He conceded, his voice barely a whisper. Let's take a quick look and then head back. As he spoke, a dark feeling settled over him, a premonition of impending disaster. He took a cautious step forward, 
crossing the threshold of Devil's Gate, and his world shifted irrevocably. Chapter 3, A Shift in Reality The moment they stepped through Devil's Gate, the world seemed to warp around them. The lush greenery of the forest vanished, replaced by a desolate wasteland of cracked earth and skeletal trees reaching towards the leaden sky. An oppressive silence hung heavy in the air, broken only by the unsettling crunch of dead leaves under their feet. The vibrant blue butterfly that had led them here was nowhere to be seen. Mark's stomach lurched. This wasn't just a change in scenery, it was a shift in reality itself. An unnatural chill seeped into his bones despite the absence of a breeze. Sarah, ever the optimist, let out a surprised gasp. Wow, splice, ceased. Billy, however, remained silent, clutching his backpack straps tightly. His wide eyes darted nervously around the barren landscape. In the distance, the twisted branches of the dead trees seemed to writhe and contort like skeletal fingers reaching out to grasp them. As they ventured deeper, unsettling occurrences began to chip away at their initial sense of wonder. A sudden gust of wind howled through the dead trees, sending a flurry of leaves swirling around their feet. The shadows seemed to flicker and dance with an unnatural life, taking on grotesque shapes that stretched and morphed in the fading light. A low, guttural growl echoed from somewhere beyond the trees, sending shivers down their spines. Mark felt a growing sense of paranoia. He kept glancing over his shoulder, a primal fear urging him to run. Sarah too seemed shaken. Her initial bravado had dimmed, replaced by a wary apprehensiveness. Billy, his face pale and drawn, clung tightly to his mother's hand. Nightfall descended quickly, cloaking the desolate landscape in an inky blackness. The oppressive silence intensified, broken only by the unsettling chirping of unseen creatures. They huddled together under a single, gnarled tree, the meager shelter offering little comfort from the creeping fear. Exhausted from the trek and overwhelmed by the unsettling events, Billy drifted off to sleep. Mark, unable to relax, watched over his son. He noticed Billy whimpering in his sleep, his face contorted in fear. Suddenly, Billy's eyes snapped open, wide with terror. Mommy, Daddy, there are things watching us, he cried, pointing at the darkness beyond the trees. Mark and Sarah exchanged worried glances. Billy described vivid nightmares, filled with grotesque creatures with glowing eyes and razor-sharp claws. As the night wore on, the lines between dream and reality seemed to blur for Billy. Each rustle in the leaves, each flicker of shadow, fueled his terror. Mark, already on edge, felt his anxiety spiral out of control. He scanned the darkness surrounding them, searching for the source of Billy's fear. The oppressive silence felt heavy and threatening as if something unseen lurked just beyond a veil of darkness. Sarah, her voice barely a whisper, tried to comfort Billy, weaving a story of friendly forest creatures to dispel his fear. But even Sarah couldn't shake off the gnawing unease that had settled in her gut. As they huddled together for warmth against the chill that permeated the night, a horrifying realization dawned on them. They were trapped in this desolate nightmare and the unseen entity that watched them from the shadows seemed to relish their growing terror. Chapter 4. The Search for Escape The oppressive darkness seemed to cling to them like a shroud as dawn broke over the desolate landscape. Exhausted and shaken from the previous night's terror, the family huddled together for warmth. The harsh sunlight offered little comfort in this barren wasteland. Billy his eyes red-rimmed and puffy from tears, clung to Sarah. His once bright eyes held a deep-seated fear that tugged at Mark's heartstrings. A heavy silence hung in the air, broken only by the rasping cough of a nearby crow. The urgency to escape this desolate nightmare gnawed at Mark. 
He stood up, his muscles stiff from the night spent huddled under the gnarled tree. We need to get out of here, he declared, his voice hoarse. But which way? Sarah asked, her voice laced with despair. Mark scanned the desolate landscape, searching for any sign of the familiar trail. But the lush greenery and well-worn path they had taken the day before were gone. The only landmarks were the twisted, skeletal trees and the cracked, barren earth stretching out before them in all directions. A cold dread settled in Mark's stomach. They were lost. Panic flickered in Sarah's eyes, but she quickly composed herself. Don't worry, Mark, she forced a smile. We just need to retrace our steps. Remember the butterfly? Billy whimpered, burying his face in Sarah's shoulder. The mere mention of the butterfly, once a symbol of adventure, now evoked only fear. Determined, Mark started walking in the direction they believed they had entered Devil's Gate. However, the landscape seemed to shift and twist around them. The path they swore they had walked just yesterday seemed to disappear, replaced by new clusters of dead trees and crumbling rocks. Frustration and despair gnawed at Mark. They were walking in circles, trapped in this twisted parody of a forest. As the sun climbed higher in the sky, casting harsh shadows across the cracked earth, the tension between Mark and Sarah began to rise. We should have listened to you, Sarah said her voice laced with accusation. We shouldn't have come through that gate. Mark, his own frustration boiling over, snapped back. It wasn't just me, Sarah. You were the one who insisted on following that stupid butterfly. Billy whimpered louder, burying his face deeper into Sarah's embrace. The sound of their argument seemed to echo through the desolate landscape, unanswered and amplifying their sense of isolation. Shame washed over Mark as he saw the hurt flicker across Sarah's face. He knelt down beside his son, pulling Billy into a tight hug. It's all right, buddy, he murmured, forcing a smile. Suddenly, a glint of sunlight caught Mark's eye. He squinted, noticing a series of strange symbols carved into a nearby rock face. The swirling patterns resembled the ones etched on Devil's Gate sending a shiver down his spine. As he examined the symbols closer, a flicker of hope ignited within him. Perhaps these were clues, remnants of a forgotten past that might hold the key to their escape. Chapter 5 The whispers grow louder. The discovery of the carved symbols offered a glimmer of hope amidst the encroaching despair. Mark traced the swirling patterns with a trembling finger a sense of urgency fueling his actions. Perhaps these symbols held the key to their escape, a forgotten language whispering secrets of this desolate realm. Sarah, however, remained unconvinced. Symbols? Really? Mark? This is some kind of horror movie, not a treasure hunt, she said, her voice laced with sarcasm. The underlying tension between them was palpable, the initial blame game had morphed into a suffocating silence, punctuated only by Billy's occasional whimpers. The once adventurous spirit in Sarah's eyes had dimmed, replaced by a weary resignation that gnawed at Mark's already frayed nerves. Mark ignored her comment, his mind racing with possibilities. He desperately searched for more symbols, his eyes scanning the barren landscape. The relentless sun beat down mercilessly, further amplifying his growing unease. Suddenly, a chilling gust of wind swept through the skeletal trees, sending a flurry of dead leaves swirling around their feet. In that same instant, a low, guttural whisper echoed through the desolate landscape. It seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once, a sound that sent shivers down Mark's spine. Did you hear that? He asked, his voice barely a whisper. Sarah frowned. Hear what? That whispering, Mark stammered, his eyes darting nervously around. Sarah, however, remained skeptical. There's nothing, Mark, 
You're just imagining things. But Mark wasn't so sure. The whispers returned, more pronounced this time, carrying a sinister undercurrent that sent a jolt of fear through him. Were they taunting him? Was this some cruel game being played by the unseen entity that held them captive? His paranoia began to spiral. He started seeing fleeting shadows flicker at the edge of his vision, only to vanish when he tried to focus on them. The line between reality and his own anxieties started to blur. Then, in the distance, amidst the skeletal trees, a dark figure seemed to dart behind a crumbling rock formation. Mark froze, his heart pounding in his chest. He pointed towards the direction of the fleeting glimpse. Did you see that, Sarah? Sarah squinted in the harsh sunlight. See what? A figure over there, Mark stammered, his voice laced with a tremor of fear. Sarah followed his gaze, but saw nothing. Frustration flickered across her face. Mark, there's nothing there. You're letting your imagination run wild. But Mark wasn't convinced. The fleeting glimpse, coupled with the intensifying whispers, fueled his terror. The playful spirit of adventure that had initially brought them to Devil's Gate had morphed into a suffocating fear. He accused Sarah, his voice thick with anger and paranoia. This is all your fault. You wanted adventure, and now look where it's gotten us. Sarah's eyes widened in hurt. Don't be ridiculous, Mark. We're in this together. Billy, overwhelmed by the escalating tension and his own mounting fear, began to sob uncontrollably. Mark's heart ached for his son, a wave of shame washing over him for his outburst. He knelt down beside Billy, pulling him into a tight hug. As he whispered soothing words into his son's ear, he vowed to find a way out of this nightmare. He had to protect his family, no matter the cost. Chapter 6 Confronting the Darkness As Mark knelt beside Billy, his heart pounded with a mixture of fear and determination. He had to get them out of this desolate nightmare. The whispers had grown bolder, a constant hiss that seemed to seep into his very bones. Sarah, her eyes red-rimmed from unshed tears, knelt beside them, placing a comforting hand on Mark's shoulder. Despite their escalating arguments, the shared fear had forged a fragile bond between them. Billy, clinging to his father, hiccuped softly, his sobs subsiding into sniffles. Suddenly, a glint of metal caught Mark's eye amongst the cracked earth and scattered rocks. He brushed away the debris, revealing a tarnished mess kit. Curiosity peaked. He continued digging, unearthing a knapsack and a weathered leather-bound journal. His breath hitched. Were they not the first unfortunate souls to stumble upon Devil's Gate? An unsettling coldness washed over him as he gingerly picked up the journal, its pages brittle and yellowed with age. Sarah gasped beside him, her eyes widening in horror. Look, she whispered, pointing towards a skeletal hand protruding from the earth nearby. A single silver ring adorned its bony finger, a stark reminder of the fate that might befall them if they didn't find a way out. Mark, his voice tight with urgency, flipped through the journal. The faded ink scrawled frantic entries, detailing a similar journey through Devil's Gate, a descent into a horrifying reality, and ultimately, a desperate plea for escape. A flicker of hope ignited within him as he reached the final entry. The writer mentioned a ritual, an attempt to appease the unseen entity that held them captive. The ritual involved gathering specific stones chanting an ancient inscription carved on the inner cover of the journal and offering a personal treasure to appease the malevolent force. Mark scanned the desolate landscape, his eyes searching for the stones described in the journal. Relief flooded him as he spotted clusters of the smooth, white stones scattered amongst the dead trees. He explained his find to Sarah, a spark of renewed hope flickering in her eyes. Billy, Sensing their shift in mood, sniffled back a tear. 
Are we going to get out of here, Daddy? He asked, his voice small but hopeful. Mark pulled his son into a tight embrace. We're going to try, buddy, he murmured, his voice filled with newfound determination. Following the cryptic instructions in the journal, they spent the next few hours gathering the stones and memorizing the inscription. As dusk approached, casting long, grotesque shadows across the barren landscape, they stood before Devil's Gate, the very place they'd entered with careless enthusiasm. Mark, his voice trembling slightly, began chanting the inscription in a language that seemed to twist on his tongue. The air crackled with a strange energy as he completed the chant. He then placed the gathered stones in a specific pattern at the base of the archway. Sarah, understanding her role in the ritual, reluctantly took off her wedding ring, the symbol of their love and commitment. With a heavy heart, she placed it amongst the stones. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she held them back, her gaze fixed on Mark. A tense silence descended upon them. The whispers, ever present throughout their ordeal, seemed to intensify, swirling around them in a malicious symphony of sound. Then, a sudden gust of wind erupted, howling around them with a chilling fury. The skeletal trees whipped back and forth, their branches scraping against the cracked earth as if in defiance. For a terrifying moment, Mark thought they had failed. But then, a faint, shimmering distortion appeared in the air near the archway. It pulsed with an otherworldly light, creating a temporary weakness in the barrier. This was their chance. With a surge of adrenaline and a desperate hope for escape, Mark grabbed Sarah and Billy's hands, pulling them towards the shimmering distortion. Chapter 7 Escape Adrenaline coursed through Mark's veins as he sprinted towards the shimmering distortion in Devil's Gate. The wind howled around them, a cacophony of sound that threatened to drown out his own ragged breaths. Sarah and Billy, their faces etched with a mixture of terror and hope, clung tightly to his hands. This was their only chance. Their makeshift offering, guided by the cryptic journal, had created a temporary tear in the barrier. It pulsed with an otherworldly light an unstable gateway back to their world. Reaching the distortion, Mark felt a surge of raw energy. With a desperate cry, he lunged forward, pulling Sarah and Billy close behind him. The shimmering light distorted their vision, twisting and warping the landscape around them. A wave of nausea washed over him, the world dissolving into a kaleidoscope of color and sound. Then, just as abruptly as it began, the disorientation ceased. They tumbled through the shimmering veil, landing with a collective gasp on the solid ground beyond. Disoriented and blinking back tears, they found themselves back under the familiar stone archway of Devil's Gate. The afternoon sunlight filtered through the lush canopy of the redwood forest, casting warm shadows on the moss-covered ground. Birds chirped merrily in the branches overhead, a sound that seemed like a symphony compared to the desolate silence of the nightmare world they had just escaped. Mark lay there for a moment, his chest heaving, his body trembling with the aftereffects of their ordeal. Sarah, tears streaming down her face, pulled him into a tight embrace. Billy, his face buried in Sarah's shoulder, let out a choked sob. Relief washed over them in waves, so intense it almost hurt. They were alive. They were back in their own world. The horrifying reality of Devil's Gate seemed like a distant, unsettling dream. Slowly, they picked themselves up, their bodies bruised and battered from their ordeal. The backpack, miraculously still intact, hung from Mark's shoulder. Sarah, her gaze lingering on her bare finger, reached for Billy's hand. We need to get out of here, Mark croaked, his voice hoarse. The once inviting Hidden Valley Trail now held a sinister air. With no desire to linger, they retraced their steps, the familiar path seeming shorter, almost welcoming, compared to the desolate wasteland they had just escaped. As they emerged from the trail, blinking in the sunlight, 
they spotted their minivan parked near the park entrance. It seemed to gleam like a beacon of safety and comfort. Relief washed over them once more as they piled into the familiar vehicle. The drive home was filled with a comfortable silence. The playful banter and adventurous spirit that had marked their initial journey had been replaced by a profound sense of gratitude for their second chance. They had stared into the abyss and the abyss had stared back, but they had emerged forever marked by the experience. Devil's Gate may have released them, but the chilling memory of their encounter and the unsettling whispers that lingered in the back of their minds would forever serve as a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the veil of reality. Chapter 8, A Changed Perspective. Emerging from the wooded trail, they blinked in the warm afternoon sunlight. The world seemed impossibly vibrant. Sunlight dappled through the lush canopy of redwood trees, casting a mosaic of light and shadow on the moss-covered forest floor. Birdsong, a melody they'd almost forgotten, filled the air. The oppressive silence of Devil's Gate felt like a distant nightmare. Relief, thick and heavy, settled in their chests. They were back. They were safe. The familiar path stretched out before them, no longer a menacing maze, but a comforting guide. Each step on the solid ground felt like a victory. The once carefree trek back to the car was now imbued with a newfound seriousness. The playful banter and adventurous spirit that had marked their initial journey had been replaced by a quiet contemplation. The harrowing experience had forged an unbreakable bond between them a shared secret that transcended words. Reaching the parking lot, they piled into their minivan, the once ordinary vehicle, now a symbol of sanctuary. The drive home was filled with a comfortable silence, punctuated only by the rhythmic hum of the engine. They were exhausted, both physically and emotionally, yet a profound sense of gratitude permeated the silence. Back in the familiar normalcy of their home, the ordeal began to feel surreal. Yet, the unsettling whispers from Devil's Gate still echoed faintly in the back of their minds, a chilling reminder of the darkness they had encountered. Days turned into weeks, and the vividness of their experience began to fade. The vibrant colors of their life, once muted by fear, returned. Laughter filled their home once more, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. One sunny afternoon, they decided to visit a local park for a picnic. As they spread out a blanket beneath a sprawling oak tree, a sense of normalcy settled over them. Billy, his laughter echoing through the park, chased butterflies with the same carefree spirit he'd possessed before their encounter with Devil's Gate. Mark, watching his son, felt a pang of unease. He glanced at Sarah, their eyes meeting in a silent understanding. They both knew their lives were forever changed. Suddenly, a glint of sunlight caught Mark's eye. He froze, his gaze fixed on the rough bark of the oak tree beneath which they sat. Carved into the trunk, barely discernible amidst the grooves and knots, was a single, swirling symbol. It was identical to the ones they had seen etched on Devil's Gate. A shiver ran down his spine. The park, bathed in warm sunlight and filled with the sounds of laughter, seemed a little less ordinary. The symbols served as a subtle reminder the darkness they had encountered might not be entirely vanquished. Perhaps it lurked just beyond the veil of reality, waiting for the unwary or the foolish to stumble upon it. But for now, they were safe. They had faced the darkness and emerged stronger their bond as a family, an unwavering shield. They would cherish the normalcy of their lives, forever grateful for their second chance. The memory of Devil's Gate, though unsettling, would serve as a cautionary tale, a reminder of the unseen forces that existed just beyond the boundaries of their world. And as they watched Billy chase butterflies, their laughter blending with the symphony of the park, they knew they would face whatever darkness came their way together.